Greetings dear friends, I present your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Honda CRV. Most of the CRV are all-wheel drive. It may not be bad, but it means that they have a bevel gear, dual pump clutch and propeller shaft. The peculiarity of the all-wheel drive from Honda is that it is completely useless if there is even the slightest chance to bury in mud, snow or sand. This is due to the original four-wheel drive wiring diagram. Four-wheel drive cars from the USA do not have these units, so there is no hassle associated with them, but there are very few such cars. In addition to the clutch itself, everything is standard here. A simple gearbox in the front, a simple gearbox in the back. They are quite reliable, but the coupling has its own characteristics. Two pumps, front and rear, are pumped through the chamber with the clutch pack. One is driven by a propeller shaft and the other by the rear axle wheels. With the coordinated operation of the pumps, which means approximately equal revolutions of the shafts, the clutches are not compressed and the car rides on the front drive. When a difference in revolutions appears, the second pump doesn't have time to pump out oil, the pressure in the chamber rises and closes the clutches. And close them well, it can transfer all the moment to the rear axle. There is no center differential here. The engagement turns out to be very hard, so the system is tuned with a good margin of engagement revolutions in order to avoid frequent clutch engagement. The systems work well on hard dry roads, rocky ground and similar surfaces. But in our standard mod it doesn't work at all. In addition, the differential at the rear allows for a large difference in the revolution so that the amount of clutch engagement is difficult to predict accurately. It turns out that connecting the clutch in slippery protected turns out to be fatal. And it's not for nothing that the car, after restyling in 2005, was equipped with a non-disconnected ESP. It turned out to be very dangerous in winter without it. I have had experience driving on slippery roads in the second generation CRV, and I can say that this type of four-wheel drive without proper training is very dangerous. With that, you need to be constantly prepared for the fact that the rear axle suddenly directs the car into a skid, and abruptly without warning. It is enough to add a little thrust to correct an emergent skid, and the situation can develop in the most unpredictable way. Without special skills and a subtle, subtle sense of the clutch power reserve, this feature is unlikely to be used. In general, it was not in vain that this system was abandoned even in the markets of those countries where there is almost no snow. Manual transmissions are not much of a hassle, they are reliable, as befits a Honda design. There is no need to be afraid of either 5-speed steps or 6-speed manual transmissions that appeared after restyling, but with automatic machines everything is not so simple. They feature in the form of an overrunning clutch for engaging the second gear turn out to be good for passenger cars, allowing them to simplify the design and speed up shifting, in any case before the widespread introduction of electronic feedback control systems. On a CUV, this feature on the machine turned out to be a real Trojan horse. When trying to rock the car, the drivers were almost guaranteed to kill the automatic transmission, but if you do not do this, then the box can last a long time. Its design is strong, although it is distinguished by excessive originality and decent weight, but as long as there is pressure, it will ride at least one of the gears. Several varieties of similar boxes were installed on the CRV. The main problems of these boxes are associated with the breakdown of the overrunning clutch of the second gear, and after a run of 200-300 km, solenoids and bearings are often let down. The clutches here are almost eternal, and if you don't miss the all level, they will last up to 300-350 km. True, the individual selections of gear ratios of the rear box has one feature. The fourth gear is loaded a little more, and the wear of its clutches can be noticeable. This can be especially expected from cars from Germany and from fans of grabbing on the highway with a significant excess of speed. The later versions of shaft automatic transmissions were already seriously inferior to more modern planetary designs in terms of switching speed, so the charger of cars with automatic transmission is very Nordic, even in American cars with 2.4 liter engines. A newer fire speed automatic transmission of the MCTA series or a similar gain in dynamics doesn't give. But the car becomes more economical and gear changes are smoother here because of the close gear rows. But in service, this automatic transmission is much more difficult, primarily due to less unification of the design and due to childhood diseases. With runs of more than 150,000, you need to be ready for the first repairs, for example to replace the overrunning clutch of the second gear, which is fails quite early, especially among fans of intense acceleration. The resource of linear solenoids is also relatively small, with the same 150,000 mileage, the pressure is already not very stable. All pressure sensors can also supply. These breakdowns lead to the appearance of shocks when switching and overloading the mechanical part of the automatic transmission. 
Other damage to the well body is also possible. But I would like to note that mileage of cars with its automatic transmissions is still less than with four stage ones, therefore there are also fewer breakdowns in general. Motors are traditionally a strong point of Honda. In this case, the main engines for the model were in the new family of the key series. European and Japanese cars were equipped with only 2 liter K20A4 and a 2.4 liter version K24A1 was also installed on the Americans. The Europeans also relied on the 2.2 liter and 22A2 diesel, but due to its rarity and unpopularity there was a little data on it. You can praise the motors for as long time, but I will limit myself to a statement of the fact. They are robustly made, able to operate at low oil pressure, are rated for SAE20, but if necessary they also perfectly tolerate SAE60 oils. These oils are recommended for racing modes. The engines have a large boost margin and the factory versions for 200 forcers are quite affordable. CRV engine options have a relatively low compression ratio of 9.8 and low power, even a voluminous 2.4 liter. Of course they have a one VTEC phase control system. But then there are no hydraulic lifters, the clearances need to be adjusted every 40-50,000 km. The resource of the timing chain is above 200,000 km, true the phase regulatory has to be changed more often, which somewhat devaluates the mileage of the iron as a whole. The resource of the piston group with careful movement is capable of exceeding the serious mark of 300,000 km. In practice, forced versions do not last so long, and even a weak K20A4 in an active driver starts to eat up old when running about 100,000 due to wear of the rings. Unfortunately, even a square motor, the dimension of the K20 is 86 per 86 mm, is not rusted at high operation speeds. It is easy to find wear on the piston, rings, liners and cylinder. However, for knee drivers with runs far beyond 300,000 km, the engine was often opened only for revising and timing replacing the phase regulator, adjusting the valves and minor cleaning the crankcase. And of course, to replace the exhaust camshafts. Except, this is a consumable that quickly fails due to the operation of the phase control system. Given the high revolutions where of the piston group and the age of engines in general, oil leaks are a typical problem. Usually the front crankshaft oil seal is the first to surrender, which with a certain amount of optimism can be called good luck. It would be more difficult to change the rear oil seal. Rattle contamination, floating speed, intake leaks are also invariable companions of the killed crankcase ventilation system and piston group wear. It is necessary to get used to the current VTEC valve. The reason most often lies in the rubber seals, which need to be changed regularly. The rubber bands of the crankcase ventilation system are also not eternal, most often the pipes break at the junction of rubber and plastic parts. Catalyst resource can really be frustrating. For those who like to spin the engine, especially with an unsuccessful choice of oil, the catalyst dies even before hundreds of thousands of mileage. In most cases, the catalyst still lives up to 150,000 km and much less often up to 200,000. Considerable merit of such a short life is the winter starts and the peculiarities of the mixture formation of Japanese engines in the winter. In any case, copies from the United States with runs of over 200,000 mileage may have a newer seriously repaired engine and an original catalyst without traces of replacement. Car manufacturer before 2003 could have problems with the cooling system associated with local overheating of the forest cylinder. The motors were changed as part of a revocable campaign and the cooling system was redesigned, so now the chances of meeting the motor with such a defect are minimal. The K24A1 engines of American cars are a very good choice. There is noticeably more thrust, which is felt by the dynamics at low revolutions. Their fuel consumption is lower and the resource of the piston group is higher than that of other motors. Due to the urgency of the problem, I will pay attention, pay a little attention to the issue of viscosity of oils. Honda engines were among the first to be developed for low viscosity SAE20 oils. They work with them perfectly, but this doesn't mean that at all that oils with a different viscosity cannot be poured into them. There is a popular belief that viscous oils, even as AE40, can ruin the engine. In practice, of course, this cannot be. Never. On an unheated engine, the oil viscosity is much higher than the passport and far beyond the ASE 60 parameters. When driving on the highway, the viscosity of SAE20 oil at 80 degrees in the crankcase will be several times higher than SAE60 oil at 120 degrees and such modes of movement of the motor can be predominant and is fully designed for them. At high temperatures and loads, it is directly recommended to use a more viscous oil than the minimum prescribed. This will provide the engine with better protection. 
of the negative consequences, only the worst oil drain from the oil scrubber ring increased chances of ring cocaine due to abundance of oil, a slightly higher oil burnout after reaching the maximum reasonable film thickness and a change in the operating parameters of the phase control system can be noted. The use of oils with a slightly higher viscosity, for example SAE30, is generally recommended even on new engines used for prolonged traffic through traffic jams at high air temperatures and under load. An increase in the temperature of the piston, squeezing out caskets and other horror stories are unscientific fantasy. In life, the use of a more viscous oil can only be fraught with the loss of insignificant percentages of power and probably increased oil burnout through the piston group. The latter, by the way, can be perfectly compensated by smaller leaks and losses through the crankcase ventilation. On this information about the problems of the Honda series is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.